Running is something I'm very passionate about. I, I started running when I was playing tennis as a young girl. Candace was always very accomplished. Whatever she did, she was competitive, wanted to succeed. Candace probably one of the most loyal people I know. She's fiercely competitive while also elevating other women. She is one of the best athletes I know. She's very energetic and uh, driven. She's always someone that's there for you. She's always puts others ahead of herself. And you always know she's authentic. When I first fainted, I had ran a marathon and I was about 20 yards in front of the finish line and I collapsed into a, a chain link fence. And at that point, I saw two men dragging a young girl across the line so she could complete the race and realized it was her. She had previously done marathons without any difficulty, had always been in great shape and uh, was well hydrated. So it was kind of unsettling, a little scary, and kind of suspicious that there might be other things going on. My entire family is in the medical profession. And my father, being you know primary care physician and probably more skeptical of everything, he said, okay, let's just kind of monitor you and, and make sure you know, we follow this and nothing else happens. There was no history of AFib at that point, but looking back, we sort of wonder if that was the initial episode. Atrial fibrillation is the most common heart rhythm problem in the world. It's an irregular heartbeat that comes from the top left-hand corner of the heart. And it is the second most common cause of stroke in the United States. Over time, I had a, several more spells where I was really out of breath experiencing chest pain and trouble walking upstairs, and uh, it was progressively getting worse. When I first learned about Candace's fainting spells, I just remember thinking, like, how could a strong woman have, have this situation happen? And it was, it was really concerning as a friend. We'd gone up to Mount Royal, which is an old extinct volcano in Montreal, and she decided she wanted to run because we were too slow for her. So she took off running and then stopped, and we caught up to her, and she was kind of ashen color, and said she felt nauseous. When I checked her pulse, it was so fast that I couldn't determine whether it was just really, really fast or, when, or whether it was erratic as well. And it would take just a matter of 30 seconds or so before it re returned to almost normal rhythm. And so that was when we first started to take a look at things and had me go see a cardiologist. Like many young women, when Candace first started experiencing her symptoms, it was attributed to dehydration or other things. And sometimes when they have symptoms, they're not always taken very seriously. So her path to finding a diagnosis required years of her life and persistence and understanding that something wasn't right with her body. After all the medications that we tried and nothing was working because of the side effects, the, the doctors said, well, we'll try to figure out what other avenue we can go. They first started with a patch that they put externally over your heart, but unfortunately I had an allergic reaction to the patch. So then they moved on to a Holter monitor where I had these electrodes put all over my body and wires everywhere. Uh, and I tried to work out, but Sometimes the thing was beeping and people could hear it, or some, you know, often when I started to sweat, all the electrodes were coming off, and I'm trying to hold the electrodes to see if it can get a reading. And so, uh, needless to say, I, I really struggled with, you know, everything that was being offered, and, and, the, and the physicians struggled because they weren't able to capture anything that was going on. It was stressful not knowing what was going on and the quality of her life was diminished by some degree. There were times even in the working world where the monitor went off in the middle of a boardroom meeting. I knew immediately what was happening, as did Candace. As I looked over at her, as in her grace, because she's an incredibly graceful woman, she just paused, said, excuse me for a minute and stepped out of the meeting, but I could see on her face her concern. And they decided that they were going to go in and, and try to do an ablation. And they found the area that was causing atrial fibrillation. I had the ablation and it seemed to get a little bit better, but then about four or six months later, I started to experience more symptoms. When the electrophysiologist in Texas told me that she thought that I'd be a great candidate for the Reveal Link, she said that it's a product that they would insert in a very simple procedure. We'll leave it there for three years. Information and data will be taken from the device and sent to the nurses and they'll be able to see any kind of events that you're having and you can go about your day-to-day -day life. An insertable cardiac monitor has really been a revolution in helping physicians and electrophysiologists find out the cause of 
sporadic episodes of either fainting or arrhythmias. I think that the name says it all. Reveal, as in reveal the cause of the arrhythmia or the fainting, and link, which is link the patient and the physician. I had received a couple calls from the care team, and they asked a lot of questions even around if I ate certain food, if I had any caffeine, you know, just kind of walking through my day and, and what was triggering the events. When I received the phone calls, I wasn't too surprised because those happened to be exercise-induced and I could feel my heart rate going up. It really made me feel good that there was this care team watching me and telling me what was okay and what was not and what I needed to do in order to, to manage the situation. The Reveal Link and implantable cardiac monitors can help us not just diagnose episodic atrial fibrillation, but also help the physician manage the ongoing care. So it really helps me monitor their AFib burden and what is the burden on their heart from this heart rhythm problem. The data is just so detailed. I felt a tremendous amount of relief knowing that there's going to be somebody monitoring her, allowing her to push the limits, but in a, in a safe way. To me, it looked it sounded like a godsend because it was you know, easy to put in and uh, we would have a groundwork, a paperwork of uh, what exactly was going on. The Reveal Link was able to provide a lot of data to the physician. So I basically learned through the Reveal Link and, and what they were able to see that this is a way I can manage my disease. And, and go back to my day to day. We want our patients to go forth confident that they can exercise, that they can re-enter all of the things that they like to do. Uh, Candace likes to run, play golf. So you wanna give people their confidence back. We're more confident that even if she has symptoms, she knows how to handle that. She has to sort of monitor the way she feels and be attentive to symptoms she's having. She's also learned to be more conscientious about intake of calories and water before exercise. She's a competitive athlete. A lot about her identity has been able to push beyond limits and she's able to do that now. It's important to own your health and to have awareness and, and listen to your body and make sure that if you have any symptoms that you are seeing a doctor and you're having things checked.